Should you still buy condos in 2020? Should you still invest in Toronto real estate in 2020? Well, let's look. This is Yossi Kaplan, Toronto real estate agent mortgage broker. And today we're going to explore if we should still buy condos and real estate in Toronto in 2020. All right, quick intro. Yossi Kaplan, search realty, search mortgage. Real estate agent mortgage broker, we search realty and search mortgage. Fantastic company, twitter.com slash Yossi Kaplan. Find all the news right here. Okay. Um, I'm going to run you through a couple of things. Urban Realty Toronto, where I post all the best article, what to buy, deals, assignments, new construction, all this stuff. I think I hit the nail on the head very, very well um, recently and, and even before. Uh, USCKaplan.com, more investment advice, uh, more assignments, and more pre construction going on here. All the videos will be posted here. York Luxury Real Estate.com, that's my over a million site. Um, all the fancy stuff going right here. Toronto Realtor predicts 15% increase in condo prices of 2019. I, th I think I was on the money here. And everything that I put here, I think was a great success. So follow, 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 follow. Okay, Toronto Condos for Sale, that's my new site. When you go to Toronto Condos for Sale and you hit that, but there's a floating button here. I found this function that does it. It'll basically run you through a list of whatever is in the system right now and all the new condos you can buy. It'll give you the basic information on each condo and then you can register right here I'll get your email, I'll send you the plans, prices, and whatever you need to know. Okay? Loading late. Um, when you scroll down, it'll say condo details, and you'll see 31 condo, Ontario development, Upper construction, address, everything here. Okay? And here you can find, so you can find all the new condos that are uploaded for you automatically, whether it's the Forest Hill, the Seine, Galleria, Portland, St. Clair, on and on and on. It it's, goes on forever. Okay. Uh, yossi.searchrealty.co let me show you how you do this okay so you go to yossi.searchrealty.co that's right out of uh, search realty and you'll get to this page here I'm not logged in so you'll get the exact same what I get now let's put Toronto and it'll complete for me Toronto Ontario great search here and from here this tool is amazing and so I'm gonna in this video I'm gonna expose some the tools that I use and I want you to use um, if you like, of course, uh, the same tools that I use, so you can copy what I'm doing here. So the first thing we want to know if we want to invest in 2020 is to see what the market is like now. So let's do a quick review of the market, and then I'll show you, I'll show you how I do it, and I'll show you how I gather information and try to understand where this market is going. So this is the default search, obviously. Um, let's put some filters. Okay, so first of all, I always put one bath to get out. You know, there's some parking spots listed or commercial spaces, so one... One will kill it. I leave it at zero because there's a lot of studios, and then of course, see all the prices jump. I'll put a 400,000 minimum price just to weed out again all the stuff that's not interesting. And of course, the system will show all kinds of numbers as you zoom in. The system will load more and more and more, and then you can use more and more filters here. Um, for example, you can and you can just like turn these on and off. So, condo apartment. Uh, so, here are all the condo apartments listed in the system condo townhouse. I can just remove this, put the condo townhouse, so here all the townhouses, okay? Uh, some of these, depending where the information comes from, so this will not do anything, just use this one. Okay. Uh, if you want to see the freeholds, the homes, so they're right here, and that's how it works, okay? So that's great. Uh, if you just uncheck, you just get everything in the system. Um, it doesn't have enough room, so once you zoom in, um, here I am east of Viag, I'm going to go back to my area, there you go. So now I'm going to go getting back here and it's starting to show more and more listing redo search here so then you can run the search right here and then all all the listings come here now just show me the uh just show me the condos and the townhouses okay there you go okay so there you go uh, here we are entertainment district king west old toronto perfect so this one tool is very very useful i'll get back to it in a minute uh, the second tool of course is the condo calculator that's launched this week with great success thank you everyone for supporting um, go to the condocalculator.ca, put your name and email, and you'll get the calculator. We'll, we'll go over this. This is the calculator you get. It's right here. And I'm going to make some numbers magic for you. Uh, just stay with me. I'm going to get back to this uh, after my review. Okay, Yossi Kaplan Real Estate. Go to Google. Hit Yossi Kaplan Real Estate. Now, you may get a bit of a different uh, search because I'm logged in, obviously, and your search patterns. But it'll give you the link. It'll give you links to all these things, and then from here, there you can take it. And my YouTube, youtube.com slash Yossi Kaplan, and you see all these uh, YouTubes coming in. A lot of them now have to do with the condo calculator. It just helps me understand uh, how much rent I need to cover my investment 
or um, what kind of mortgage I need, or what kind of deposit I need. I'll get to, that's that's all comes in the spreadsheet here. And I'll get back to that in a second. Uh, just complete this review, okay? So I'm here, and this is really important. So I put uh, in Google value of USD over time, hit it, and then click on the images. This will give you everything that Google knows, and there you go. Okay, and you can see the value is going down. I'm starting with this because it's very, very important to the discussion. What's going to happen? So what happened to the dollar? This is the U.S. dollar, but, you know, Canadian dollar is really a derivative, a copy of this, more or less, um, and the whole world economy until now. Maybe it'll change, but for now it's still the U.S. dollar. So the, as inflation goes up, the value of dollar goes down, okay? What is inflation? Inflation is when the prices rise. Why do prices rise? Because we print more money. So if, if uh, yesterday I had a, a popsicle, like the popsicle example, <laughs> but let's say I had a popsicle that cost $2, but now I printed more money, I doubled the amount of money in circulation, uh, that popsicle will have to cost $4 because the value of money was just cut by half, okay? Because I had uh, $2 in my pocket, but now they're worth only half because I made, I just created out of nowhere, I basically cut a whole bunch of pieces of uh, paper and I wrote on them dollar, 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 and I doubled that, so... There you go. So from here you can go, you know, you can go on forever, inflation calculate, all that stuff. But most important thing to understand that the one dollar that maybe a hundred years ago was one dollar is about two cents today. Oh, two cents today. One dollar eighty sixty till twenty nineteen, you know, and, and it's just endless, but it gives you the idea. So there you go. Calculate. I've never used this before. I'm doing it live with you. Two point eight percent. 31 okay so you need about you need about 30 bucks <laughs> okay so you need it's, it's one point it's less than two percent what it was worth and you need about 31 dollars uh, for what you could have bought a buck 150 years ago 159 years ago. okay that makes sense okay so what are the investment strategies and should you buy a condo in 2020 let's look at this okay so we have two problems and I'm gonna go here to condos.ca and just hit the big uh, throttle mark Okay, and that's going to give me uh, some analysis, and I'll show you here. And this is exactly how I do it. Do it with me if you like. Uh, go to condos.ca, hit Toronto, and then basically preloads a bunch of information for you. And you can see here, and if you want, I can just uh, let me reset it and do it with you so you see, you can actually see what I'm doing here. Okay, so that's for sale. Or even let's say we just go to the main condos.ca. Okay, so it gives you, uh, now condos.ca was down for a couple of days, so. You can see here, uh, it's been up, uh, and it only calculated uh, seven properties. It was down for a few days, so the numbers might be a bit skewed, so we're going to be very, very careful. Uh, these seem to be the rest, uh, the, the same. So average sold price and size, 580 for 729 square feet. That's pretty cheap uh, if you come from downtown. And the average rent is uh, $2,221 for so $600 a foot. So bring the calculator. That's Command space, by the way, if you're on the Mac. Uh, and here, just go like this. Do uh, 2221 divided by 604, $3.67 a foot. So that's your rent. Okay, so that's that's the same number. That's that's the calculation it, it performed here. See what I did? Uh, so that's the same. Yeah, that's the same. That's the same number. Okay, that's good. So we're good. Um, and what does that mean? That means that for Every square foot, this is the average, of course, for every square foot of condo that you have, uh, you're going to need $3.67 uh, to get the average rent. So let's say I have a 500 square foot condo, so times 500, and I can expect to get 1838 average. Now that's average. Now what happens when I start drilling down on uh, various neighborhoods, okay? So that, that's where it gets interesting. So if I go downtown, if I go to Toronto, bring the map. <clears throat> Okay, click that little map icon here, and we're going to zoom in, and that's a Toronto proper, right? That's a Toronto proper, and it's basically, eh, let's add, add some Scarborough. Just going to uncheck Scarborough here. We're going to uncheck, okay, so basically this is, this, is the, what I, this is my Toronto, which is from the Don River to the Humber River, okay? This is, this is what I call Toronto, uh, Toronto proper. Okay, great. Oh, the <laughs> Toronto is huge right now. Right? Toronto, Toronto starts in Niagara, ends at Ajax. Don't forget that. But for now, this is it. And now it's bringing all these uh, all these uh, properties uh, in space. And there's 18 
1,843 condoms for sale in the system right now, and you can scroll down and see where they are, and the map will correspond, okay? So how do we know what's going on? So let's go to analytics. And once you go to analytics right here, this is the, the link right here, you can see that the condo values, that's according to condos.ca, are up by 11.9%, which is 12%. That's a lot. Remember, I said 15. That's average. So I'm pretty close. And the average per square foot is 578. And that's low, and that's based... That's in East York. Okay, so that's not where I want to be. Let's go Toronto. Okay, this is better. So now I get 6.3. Mind you, that averages of averages and 747. And you can see that the values are rising. Okay, when you look at the rent, our sales, uh, they're rising a little slower. Why would rent rise slower than the price? Well, that's the first thing you need to understand. The reason the rent rise slower than the price is because the people of rent usually have fixed jobs and fixed salaries and they can't actually um, get their salaries, their income, to rise as quickly as property rises. So that's creating a lot of pressure on investors. And the very first thing you guys need to understand, that's creating huge, huge pressure on investors because as prices of new condos coming up, okay, the rents, uh, we, need, we need higher rents. Here's the downtown. We need the rents to be up more um, to cover for these costs that we carry. But if those people those people, <laughs> our friends and family, the tenants that are renting from us, if they can pay that kind of money, then we're going to be in trouble because we're going to need higher and higher dollar per foot. We need higher and higher rents to pay for the higher and higher costs of the condos. So should you buy in 2020 knowing that the price is going up and the rents are not going up as fast? They are going up. The rents are going up, but maybe not as fast. Okay, so right now the rents are three, let's say they're four bucks a foot, okay, average in Toronto. But if I, uh, if I would look at, uh, um, it's clear here. I'm trying to put King West, which is kind of my, my home turf here. King West, Queen West. So, okay, so you can see uh, King, King West have risen according to uh, this. And I'm not sure how many properties it's, it's uh, 149 for sale, but I'm not sure how many properties it's, it's averaging here. Uh, based on 875 recent sales. But over how long, I don't know. But anyway, I'll just I'll just use this. Uh, 990, so $1,000 a foot. That's your average in King West. And your rent is average of $4.08. Okay, so that's really good. So if you were to buy uh, a resale unit in King West, you can expect to pay about $1,000 a foot average. Obviously, and remember, the smaller units will be more expensive and the larger units will be less. So a smaller unit, a 500 square feet on King West, probably costs you uh, five fifty dollars to $600,000 these days. So you're looking at 1,100 to 1,200 a foot, uh, and you're gonna get for that five, uh, 500 square feet, you get about $2,000. Now, you would get maybe a little more, but right now I see a bit of a glut of units available for rent in the core. Um, yes, you heard me right. There's a lot of units for rent in the core. Um, so maybe the rents are getting a little depressed because there's more supply. Um, so is it, does, it, does it make any sense? We're gonna go to the condo calculator, okay? so. After you download the condo calculator, uh, this is the condo calculator, and once you fill this form, you're gonna get an email with a link to Dropbox, and then you're gonna download this file and put it in your Excel, put it into your, in your Apple Numbers, or upload it to Google Sheets like I do now. Okay, so if I have, uh, I used this before, and if you wanna know how to use this, go here and go to the condo calculator video, and it'll, it'll, it'll show you in great details what to do and how to work it. Um, but right now we're just going to dive right in um, and I'm going to sh show you. Let's say this is a King West condo. So King West and there will be whatever, King Street and it's a one bedroom at 500 square feet. These are very important. The number of bedrooms square feet. What's in yellow enter information. What's in green will give you information. And let's say it was a thousand bucket foot, so 500,000. Okay, so I get a number of a thousand dollar PSF. That's correct. Uh, a 20% a 20% a 20% deposit. I'm gonna need $100,000, and this is the, this is this here breaks it into deposits. Now, obviously, if you're buying uh, if you're buying resale, you're gonna put all that 20% at once. But if you're buying uh, if you're buying from developer, uh, it'll be broken down to some payments. So $100,000. You have $400,000 left to pay on mortgage. Uh, let's say your condo fees are 70 cents, 0 0.7, 70 cents a foot. Your taxes here. I have. Point A, which is about right. I can put one percent, 
and the tax will be high. That, that's kind of high. So I'll go back to the point A. That's even that's a little high. But I think the condo fees may be like 0.75. That's more realistic. And the mortgage two, let's say 289. I can get a 289 mortgage these days. I'm a mortgage broker, by the way, too. So if you need mortgage, let me know. And now I'm looking at the cost of 2578 a month for this condo. 2578 a month, okay? That's that's bare bones, basics. Now, what's the dollar per foot I need? Don't worry, the condo calculator will do it. I already pre-programmed all this stuff. So I'm just gonna go over here to the cash flow analysis. And this is all generated for me. So break even green is generated 2578, which is basically the summary of these three here. Okay, so this is this. And the cost per bedroom, it's this green, 2578 divided by how many bedrooms I have. 2578. So the rent I need is $5.16 a foot. But remember, we said that the average rent at King West is about $4 a foot. So I'm about 20 25% short. Now, if I get 25, this is the rent to cheat. So put any number you want. Let's say 2000. If I get 2000 for my tenant, then I'm losing this minus that. What I got less my cost, 578. And I'm losing $7,000 a year and I'm losing 7% annual ROI. Now, in the meantime, my condo is appreciating, and of course, I'm paying into the my mortgage. The condo calculator itself does not show it. Just show you net, 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 cash on cash returns. Um, very sim simplified returns, of course. And it doesn't bring into consideration um, value appreciation, nor it brings into consideration the fact, actually, this mortgage payment right here, where is it? Uh, right here, 1870, uh, probably, you know, about close to $1,000 of that is actually putting back into your capital. So you put back into your condo probably ten to $12,000 uh, on that year. So if, if I add it here, you know, um, I'm, and don't forget that tenants paying that. So that's, that's free money. That's money I'm getting paid for. So that money will go back into the calculation. And then of course I have a taxation, but I'm skipping all this and I'm just showing you, the condo calculator show you a very simple example. So now in this case, how would I break even? Okay, well, there's a couple of options. I mean, there's some things I cannot change. I cannot change the maintenance fees and I cannot change the taxes. I mean, theoretically, maintenance fees can, you know, stay or come down a bit, but that's a whole building thing. And taxes, you can apply to reduce your taxes, but very few people do it. Uh, what you can do is you can either get a better mortgage, um, but I don't know how better you can get than 289, maybe 2.79. Let's see if that's going to make any difference. So just do 2.79. Okay, so I saved, uh, you know, I saved twenty-one dollars, something like that, right? Two point eight nine, fifty, twenty-one dollars. Yeah, eh, you know, it's not a big deal. Didn't make a lot of change. Okay, so the other thing I can do is, of course, and this is some of your strategy, try to pay less. What happens if I pay four eighty for this condo? Did it make any difference? Well, again, not much, a little bit, but not much, and it's not realistic for me to actually pay. Uh, that amount for the condo. Um, 500 is minimum. In a King West, you're probably going to pay a little more. Maybe even 550. Let's see what happens when you do 550. So now I need, uh, I, I'm paying 1100 a foot. That's a bit more realistic. Uh, 110 my, with my deposit. And then I need uh, a 20%, I need $440,000 40, $440, mortgage. And if you need the mortgage, let me know and I'll help you get it because I'm a mortgage broker. The main industry does the same. Uh, the taxes, the taxes should be the same because it's based on analysis. Obviously, this is 0.8% of the purchase price, so it shows a bit of a higher number. So by increasing the amount of money I paid on the, on that particular condo, I'm also increasing my taxes. In real life, it's probably not going to be that much. And now I'm looking at 2,800. Okay, so that's that that because that because my mortgage went down, but the tax went up. So I'll I'll just try this just to see. That's, oh, yeah, that's better. Okay, but still, you know, it, it's quite expensive. And now the, the dollar, even, even if I try to massage the numbers here, I'm still getting 5.55 uh, per foot, and now I'm actually even more in a hole. Okay, so how can I fix this? What I can do, of course, I can start putting more money into occupancy, and that's part of the strategy I want you to do as investors. See what happens if you increase your deposits. So I have room for four deposits here and then five called occupancy. So it's really five deposits. But for the sake of resale, just you, just these are all come together because you're going to pay it up front before you close. So let's say I, add, let's say I have another um, 
Right now, my purchase price is 550, so let's say I have 10% extra. I have another $550,000. I have another $55,000. So I'm going to add 10% to to my deposit, so 55,000. So I reduced the mortgage, and now I'm back. So I saved myself about $200 a month. Okay, so that's one thing you can do. Um, not much else you can do, so you can see how when you buy this condo, um, really what you're looking at is you're looking at a different strategy, and it kind of reminds me of um, what was happening in Hong Kong. I don't know what's happening in Hong Kong now because what's going on there, but in Hong Kong, traditionally, what you would find is that people um, grab a unit, and they, they would rent it, they would, they would rent this unit to the next person. They won't actually live there. They just rent it to another person, and then they rent that to another person, and they rent that to another person, and hopefully they're going to make some uh, leeway. So, you know, you, you buy the unit, the first person buys the unit for, say, $500,000, and they rent it to the first person for, say, $2,500 a month, but they don't actually live there, and they, they flip it over, and they rent it to someone else for $3,000, and on, and on, and on, and on, and on. And that's what happened in, uh, I didn't know that, but somebody told me, that what, happened in, that what happens in Hong Kong. Would it happen in Toronto? Well, there's only one way to do it, which is you rent it through the Airbnb, right? Um, but Airbnb is not allowed in condos uh, legally, although people do it. Um, and you'll see there's actually quite a bit of vacancies on King West. And I was wondering to myself, why is that? If you want to see vacancies of King West, check this out. Condos.ca. Just go here, okay? And let's say King West. Okay. And this is really cool. So it took me a while to find it, uh, but it's up here for rent. So there's 150 condos for sale in King West right now, and they ask an uh, average of uh, 990. So that that's still reasonable in my opinion, and the average rent is uh, 408. Okay, and but let's look at the rentals. Let's see if I can get just the King West for rent. Yes, I can. 343. So that's quite a few. Okay, that's quite a few. What happens here? It, and then it shows me. It, sh it shows me the rental. So you, you, you can see here. Okay, so 410. So you can see that it is going, but it's kind of going slow. I mean, from 397, it's really the same. There was a big jump here. There was a big jump here. 2015, there was a big jump. 2016, and now it's starting to even out. It's evening out because, because people are basically can't pay more. So the thing is, when you buy a really expensive condo these days, you have to start thinking long term. So when I go back to my analysis, to the core, core, core of my business, which is real estate investing, Toronto real estate investing, that's the core, and that's what we're here for. We have to remember that once we get over $1,000 a foot, you know, especially in the rounds of 1,200 to 4, 13, 14, 15. Um, we need to expect very, very high rent. I don't know if this society can support it. Um, surely, and I showed you this in the video about Shopify. Um, where is it? There was a, one video I made uh, regarding Shopify. Okay. Um, let's see if I can find it. And that video, I actually went and I showed you how much the Shopify and the Google engineers make. And they're making anywhere from 120000 to 180000 a year. So, you know, these guys, girls are clearing eight, ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 a month. Clearing, clearing. So that means that um, you could, uh, where is that thing? Google and Shopify. That's the video right here, okay? So how to make money of Google and Shopify, you basically buy... Uh, King West, or you buy Tridel the Well, or you buy one of these condos, and that's it's going to excruciating detail here. But uh, but basically, what it shows you it shows you that they're making enough money to support this kind of rent. So it actually, takes you to a pay cycle. It's like a glass door, and it shows you the average salary in Ontario is uh, 59, but the engineers. Uh, 109,000, 149,000, you know, they're making, they're making crazy money. And there's, there's more and more, more of them. There's also schools in the area, the teaching, programming, all that stuff. So, and they're always hiring. They're always, always hiring. Okay? So that's, that's this video here. So that means that if you buy, and that's why I like the well, the Tridel, the well, even, even if it's more expensive, um, they're building uh, 250,000 square feet 
of office for Shopify in there is basically like a whole, what are the commercial buildings? They're going to get a, a few floors there, maybe the whole thing, I'm not sure. Um, and, and that's probably where you want to buy, okay? Um, right above me here, it's uh, it, uh, Kingly Condos, 620 King and 507 Adelaide. That's also a good buy. You can still get units there for 1,000, 1,100, 1,200 uh, a foot. And there's so many people working in this building, probably a couple thousand people walking into this building every day, making way, way, way more than the average of, of uh, the average salary. Okay? So th those are your focus. So that the strategy, should you buy, you should buy, but you should buy where you can get the money back, where you can sell it to someone else um, and make good profit, or you can rent it and at least break even. And those are possible, even if you're going to need to top it up a little bit, those are still possible. And I think because of the global inflation, was it this link? Where's that inflation link? I lost it. Um, but because of, that, uh, because of that global inflation, that's what you're going to find. Now it doesn't mean you're gonna you need to spend you know a million five on these properties. Although here a three bed three bath could actually make financial sense, but you may want to find something that is more reasonable in price. And let's see what you can find up to six hundred thousand. So there's still a lot of stuff. You see, there's still a lot of stuff, and I think the resale provides with great opportunity here, uh, and there's still a lot of stuff you can pick. Of course, you're going to go through it. Give me a shout. We're going to go through every single unit here. Um, but there are opportunities always. If you open to an opportunity, you will find an opportunity. So 75 Portland, 539, beautiful, absolutely gorgeous building. Uh, 508 Wellington and 509, that's good value for that building. Okay, 549.9 for Fashion House, fantastic value for this building. Uh, 11 Bathurst, 580, that's what they go for. Um, let me move up here. That's an older building. Don't worry about it. I don't like the older, older buildings because there's no long-term value there, okay? Uh, 569, 32 Camden, gorgeous. Older building, but I really love it, okay? That's, that's really nice. Camden Street's gorgeous. Um, so you can see here, there's a lot of opportunities still available at very, very reasonable price. That's the Minto, 78 Tecumseh. That's a king just off Bathurst, 36 Blue Jay. So you got a lot of options here. Uh, this is another building I really like. That's 355 King. 355 King. You can just like punch something there and see if you get anything. Yeah, I got two units. And I got even a 439.9, which is a studio. Now, maybe dollar per foot, the studio will be really, really expensive. But it can probably break even because, you know, if I, if I find a studio, I'm just going to make the comparison here. So it's going to be a one bedroom. It's going to be f how many square feet it was there? I lost my train of thought oh it doesn't say let's say it's 350 square feet just just you know just just to play so 350 square feet and the price for this is 440 340.99 so it's 1257 dollars a foot that's a lot now if i'm just doing a 20 percent down you can see i'll jump between tabs and play with it it's, it's a great game um I'm putting $88,000 down. Closing costs are not included, of course. My mortgage is $352. And I'm looking at uh, total monthly cost of $2183. And that's reasonable. Okay, that is reasonable. $2200. Um, can I get $2200 for that studio? I might be able to if the view is good. Um, I might be able to only get $200. In that case, I'll be $200 short a month. Um, so what I can do, I can maybe put 5% more here because the price is low. And now I'm down to, and that's all. And so here's my break-even point. Let's say I want to make it to 2,000. I'm going to get 2,000 for the units. I'm $80 short a month. So maybe I'll try one more percent, two more percent. <laughs> okay, I'll go full 10. Okay, so if I put, okay, so if I put 30% down, but remember it's still cash-wise, it's still reasonable. If I put $130,000 uh, on this studio, Although the price per uh, foot is up, um, I can still get good rent for it, and that's my break-even point. So this is how I found a break-even point, just by looking at my total uh, deposit, because that's my primary. The other two don't really move much. Uh, mind you, new building probably costs a little less. They tend to be cheaper. Let's say it's only 60 cents a foot. Uh, so now I'm making money, so I can put less money down. Okay, so here now I can break even with 110,000. You see what I did? I basically changed the maintenance fees because it's a new building, so probably get a lesser maintenance fees because new buildings usually a little cheaper. At least at the beginning, the first few years, 
and the taxes are still reasonable, 275 a month for a studio, and then I'm paying mortgage, uh, 1542, the 2.89, and that's amortization rate. If you want to see how the mortgage calculator is, click here, and it gives you the formula here. It's a PMT function. It's pretty easy to use. Um, and then the total monthly cost will be uh, 2027. So say 2000 now I need to achieve $5.79 a foot, and 2000 and say I break even, okay? And But don't forget... I break even at school, but if I can sell that studio for in a couple of years at five hundred thousand, that's six hundred thousand. That's sixty thousand uh, dollars. So that's uh, that's uh, just over half of my deposit in two years. So that's about twenty five, twenty eight percent return on my on my net investment, net return on my investment without the uh, the cost, of course. Uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, actually. So if you look at it from this perspective, you know, we're, we can still invest, and that's why a lot of people go for small units, even though the price is high, okay? But your other option, of course, is to go for units with two and three bedrooms. And as I showed you in our previous videos, and just to show you here, I'm just going to scroll up. Uh, one, two, three, or three bed bedrooms are using kind of the, the pre-version of the common calculator, break even. It's using the same formula, just maybe not as nice. Uh, but you can run through these, and, and you can run through these videos, and especially this one here that I released uh, yesterday, I believe, or the day before. And it's similar, but here it really compares what happens um, with the one, two, and three bedrooms. And what happens when the square feet go up, but so the bedrooms go up. And we, made, we, we realize that once you add bedrooms, you do, you're doing better. And the best thing to do is, of, of course, to have a small unit, uh, let's say 850 square feet, three bedroom, at a thousand dollar a foot. So let's say I pay 850 for this unit, and that's why I like the three columns. And now I need, although my deposit's pretty high, let's make it zero here. I need 170 thousand dollar deposit. My mortgage is high. My maintenance fee is five. Condo fee is five. That's probably going to be a little less. So 4200. And that kind of, that's okay um, if I'm looking at and. If I'm looking at about $1,500 per bedroom, okay, so um, I got a little uh, rental economy going on here, <laughs> and uh, even if I removed it to $4,200, and remember yellow is where you put your information, so that's my break-even point, $4,200, okay? Now, if I were to uh, add another, say, 10% here, because I got some time to save, and I add now, obviously, my return is going to be low because my deposit is high, but nonetheless... Now I drop my cost and I'm starting to make money on the rent. So you see, one of the strategies is to put larger deposits uh, and get a smaller unit with more bedrooms, okay? Larger deposits, more bedrooms, smaller units. And where can you find this? Ah, I know where you can find this. You can find this at a place called Nordic Condos. That's where it's available. And I think you're going to see more and more condos with this concept. So if we go back to the... Nordic, 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 uh, I don't know how to navigate this, I'll try from this tab, close player, Nordic Condos right here, because Nordic Condos does have, there you go, three bedroom units, um, and that's 810 square feet, 810, interior, we don't calculate the balcony, okay, don't ever call 810 square feet, and those come at uh, under a thousand a foot, so if I punch these numbers in, 810 and let's say I pay yellow I pay for this unit uh, even uh, let's say 790 I think you can get it for less than a thousand a foot um, and a 20% down uh, that's 39 okay so that's under four so that's not bad because now the cost per bedroom here this is the cost per bedroom is 1311 so I can rent it to three people each paying 1311 to break even that's quite reasonable, especially because Nordic is so close to uh, Young Street. So that's something I would I would look into. Okay, so your strategy for 2020 is more bedrooms, smaller size, lower price, close to proximity of somewhere where I can invest. Uh, Nordic I like because it's um, because it's close to York, and you can see it uh, in the video here. So that's that's where you are. Okay, so it's a very good uh, very good area. Um, I think they're out of the one bedrooms by now, but they, they still do have 
uh, some of the three bedrooms. So contact me, I'll give you the, the, the price. This Treddy Condos in the corner here that's also saying developer. This entire block is being redeveloped. I think it'll be fantastic. And of course, the other one is Galleria Mall. Uh, you'll see Kaplan Galleria Condos. Sorry for my typing. And you get the information about Galleria. And Galleria had, <laughs> I said 1,000 uh, agents, but then somebody corrected me and said there were 2,000 agents. And I declared uh, Toronto's three best condos, and Galleria was one of them because those, those are planned communities. Those are planned communities, and that's what you want to see, okay? So here says Galleria 1. I can tell you the 2 is already selling. Uh, 1 has just a handful of units left, a larger unit. And I would actually start looking at buying 2 and 3 bedrooms because Toronto has so many 1-bedroom condos, but not enough 2 and 3 bedrooms. So 2 and 3 bedrooms, especially because there's so many young people coming to Toronto, and eventually they're going to have children. Although, the yes, I know not a, a lot of people don't have kids anymore, but they still do. And people still do have kids, whether they intend it or not. It's just part of life. And that's going to continue in any place to live. So I like Nordic. I like Galleria. Um, if you like Uptown, this could be a great option. Portland's really interesting, too, because Portland is a unique boutique building. Uh, so that needs a different strategy. And here, that's a very long-term strategy, okay? And the reason a long-term strategy is because this, this thing comes at a premium, a high premium. So in order for this to break even, you're going to need very high deposit or very, very high rental. Um, both are achievable, but as we build more and more condos and as we, we add more and more units, we need to bring more people to the city in order to live in these condos. And our immigration, the Canadian immigration policy, have been bringing more and more people to the city. And of course, you have to have money to come to Toronto. So you have to have money to buy here or you have to have money to rent here, okay? So you can, you can go. One of the strategies that I would advise you is if you can afford high quality, you should probably look at high quality and not the cheap, cheap, cheap. If you can afford it or you're not in the mindset of buying quality and you prefer, and I'm not saying cheap is bad quality, it's not, but it, it is lesser because in order to deliver a product like this, you know, a developer does not work for free. They want a profit, of course. Everyone wants a profit. They have to invest more. So the, the, the cost on, on A-plus quality will be higher. But you, we can go to Hamilton, you know, and that's, that's another uh, thing. And I made a video. Um, I'll show you. And that's where you start going. So there's Kiwi Connor in Hamilton, uh, which we ended up not doing a deal with them, but we may do in the future. Um, should you invest out of Toronto? Okay, should you buy still here? What about Niagara? Niagara is a waiting list right now. Okay, why is everything like that? So you can, you can, you can see what I mean here. So I want to summarize this video. What we've learned today is this. In order for you to make money on these units, you have to buy them for the cheapest price possible, okay, to get uh, lower square feet, a very good plan, I should say, but also you want to make sure that the carrying costs are low. And the way to make the carrying costs low is it to buy at lesser priced uh, projects like Galleria or if, if, it's, if it's high, if it is expensive, like uh, Tridel, it has to have a phenomenal location. And of course, I got, my, I got my tenants built in here because this commercial building here, right here, I don't know if you can see my mouse here, uh, and this is a commercial building. There's going to be a lot of people getting paid a lot of money to work here, 120 to, to and more. And a lot of them will make over $200,000 a year, and they will come there for the jobs. They're going to need a place to live. And they're going to come there and start buying right away they're going to rent so this is a really good option because this is this is the jane jacobs myth it's like working living at the same place shopping everything is there especially like days like today where it's so busy and um uh, and snowy uh galleria i also really liked and i, I think I, I hit the nail right ahead because that thing's selling out so crazy and so fast because it's a mass supply community it's offering a discount of about two to three hundred dollars uh, a foot over this one, obviously the salaries people make here are much higher than here, so it's kind of all evens out. Um, and number three, that's Galleria from the area. That's I, I, absolutely gorgeous. Um, and number three, it would be the Crosstown. Um, and the Crosstown is also a giant, giant uh, project by Aspen Ridge. Uh, they build west, they build like Aspen Ridge is huge, okay? Um, 
just as good as Dell, just as good as, as Freed. Um, and they have very good plans, and I made a whole bunch of videos about them, and they have fantastic plans and very good options for you to invest. And because of their location, which is uh, DBP Don Mills 401, I think it's a very, it's a very, very viable, it's a very, very viable opportunity for you to buy here. Remember, to me, Toronto is between the DVP, between the Don, and the Humber. Focus here. If you're going out of here, let's go to Hamilton, let's go to Kitchener Waterloo, let's go to Guelph. Um, I have projects there to show you. I have projects there to introduce you to. Um, Brantford's an option too. Okay, and that's what you're gonna do. So that's it, my friends. Uh, remember, invest smart. Call me with any questions, even if you're not my client, even if we haven't worked together, it's okay. That's my job, so please bother me. Don't say, you'll say, I don't want to bother you. Yes, bother me, because that's what I do. Uh, my job is to sell you condos and to list your condos. If you're looking to upgrade your old condos, give me a shout, and we'll assess them, see what they're worth, and get you a price and get a plan to sell them and then reinvest in a rejuvenating area. And that's what we got to do. Keep on the money. Keep your tab keep your finger on the pulse like we say and make sure you make the right decisions and the best decisions for you that's it for today thank you very much yossi kaplan out